Ooh, what is up guys? My name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Busters, the series where we do crazy things in Space Engineers based on your suggestions. So do you guys remember the very first episode of Space Busters where we tried to orbit a planet and had varying levels of success? <laughs> well, based all the way back on that episode, some of you guys gave me some really good suggestions and one of those suggestions was, very similar to orbiting, can you slingshot around a planet? And that's a really good question because this is a space game with planets and gravity and slingshotting is something that you do with planets and gravity. So is it possible to do in this game? Well, I really don't know. But first, let me explain what slingshotting is to anybody who doesn't know what it is. Slingshotting is a maneuver that space people do, NASA and SpaceX people do, uh, when they're trying to launch something really far away. So what they do is they slingshot using the gravity of a planet and they manage to either A, go faster, B, go slower, or C, change directions. That's the whole goal of slingshotting. It's using gravity to your advantage so that you can, you know, do one of those things. Usually they use it to go faster because they don't want to use thrusters and stuff. They just, they're, they're like, hey, we have some gravity here. Let's, let's utilize that before we spend lots and lots of money on fuel. Gosh, this is getting into real rocket science stuff. Some satellites do three or four slingshots before they go off. I don't know how many. I think the Voyagers uh, 1 and 2 did a couple of them before they went off to God knows where. Some random, random place in the uh, solar system. <laughs> They're still going. So that's basically what slingshotting is, and you can do it in Kerbal Space Program, but the question is, can you do it in Space Engineers? And we're going to find that out. But first, before we find that out, we need to create the craft that we're going to be using to attempt our slingshot. So let's start. All right, here we are, we've got our craft. I decided to put a bunch of solar panels on rotors just because it's gonna look cool when they actually turn and stuff, which we're gonna do. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy paste this ship up in space because I don't wanna actually fly it up there. That would be a pain in the butt and it's totally not necessary for us to figure out if this is possible. Now what we're going to do as well is we're going to remove all these atmospheric thrusters and we're going to replace them with ion thrusters once we're in space. So I'll see you up there. All right, so we're way up here in the atmosphere with our nice little satellite ship here. It's got a bunch of rotors on it, which I'm kind of scared of because clang. But uh, yeah, so we're 17,000 meters up in the atmosphere. And this is a good place to mark our aim point. So what we're going to try and do with this ship is we're going to go really far away from Earth. We're going to try and aim at this particular point right here, which we'll make right now. Let's go ahead and go to GPS, new from current position, and we'll call this aim. So we're going to aim for that point right there, and we're going to measure our change in velocity from the from when we hit this point to when we get to zero gravity again. So to reiterate, we're going to be really far away from Earth. We're going to come towards Earth. We're going to be we're going to get pulled into its gravity and then eventually we're going to leave its gravity. And if our velocity has changed at all from the start to the finish, that means that the slingshot was successful. Either uh, we have a higher velocity or a lower velocity. So yeah, let's give that a go. We have our aim position. Let's go really far away from the planet and get this thing going. This is pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to get up to a nice top speed and we're going to go straight for that aim point. So once we get up to our top speed, we're going to measure what it is and we're going to stop our thrusters. So our thrusters will turn, will be off for the whole maneuver uh, just so we can see if our speed changes at all during the whole thing. Okay, so here we go. Let's start going up. We're going to try and get to around 500 or 600 meters per second before we turn off our, uh, our thrusters here and then we'll just coast. So here we go. Let's just start going, and I'm going to turn off dampeners because I don't need them for this at all. Just keep aiming at this point right here. And we'll just keep going until we get to a nice uh, a nice top speed. doesn't really matter if we hit the point, but as long as we're kind of close. Because that's somewhere that I know that's inside Earth's gravity, and so I know that will actually have us being affected by the... Uh, by the stuff. I hope our rotors don't change very much here. Sometimes rotors mess with the whole ship and make things weird. So those rotors on the side, I hope they don't uh, they don't screw everything up. But here we are, we're almost at 400 meters per second. So we're almost to where we want to be. Let's just get a little bit faster here. 
Uh, you can see at the bottom right we're at 0p gravity, which is good. We want to reach our max speed before we hit, uh, we hit their gravity. Let's go to 600, because we still have quite a way to go. 500 here, we're almost there. We're almost there, let's get it right up to 600. And there we go, so we're about 600. It's changing very, very slightly. Barely, it's at, it's at uh, 600.25. So let me write that down uh, so that I remember what it is. So 600.25, So it's kind of in between there. And I think the rotors are having a little bit of a uh, little bit of fun with that, changing the speed ever so slightly. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to enter the gravity at some point in the near future. And uh, we're gonna start seeing our speed increase. So this will be the slingshot maneuver starting Okay, we're now in the P gravity, so we're going to see our, meter, or our, our velocity uh, or our speed to start going up as we get hit by that gravity. We're going to be kind of pulled in towards the planet, and that's exactly what the slingshot is. You get pulled in towards the planet, and that's where you get your speed, and then you get pushed out the other side, which is where you start losing speed because, of the, uh, because the gravity is pulling against you at that point. So we're going into the planet, more or less. We might not get very far into the planet because we're going fast enough to escape the uh, the gravity of Earth. So we're we're more or less orbiting too fast, if you will. So let's see, we're at 616 now, 616 meters per second, and we're going down, so we're losing a lot of altitude as well. You'll also see as we get as we lose some altitude there, the p gravity is increasing as well, which is completely normal uh, for the slingshot. We're getting closer to the planet. And then eventually we're gonna, you know, we're gonna fly out the other side. P gravity is still increasing. As long as P gravity is increasing, our speed will be increasing as well. But as soon as our speed starts going down, you'll notice the P gravity start going down as well. And it should kind of bring us back to that starting point that we were at, the six point, uh, what was it, six hundred point two five, and we'll see how that works. Six hundred twenty-two. So, so it does look like we're starting to lose speed again. So we're almost done with the maneuver. Uh, we're coming out the other side. Our p gravity is going down as well, and it won't be long now until or until the maneuver is over. And once again, you'll know the maneuver is over once our p gravity reaches zero. And there it is. Okay, so uh, we can see that our speed has increased a very slight amount, but I imagine that's due to the rotors. Um, we're, we're back down to zero P gravity, so the maneuver is now over. So at the start of maneuver, the maneuver, we had 600.25 meters per second, and now at the end we have 600.9 meters per second. You know what? I'm going to try this again. I'm going to take off the rotors, and we'll see how that affects it. All right, here we are for take two, right back at the start. Let's start going up again. We're going to try and get some nice speed. This time I'm only going to go to about 500 so we can get a little closer to the planet as we go into our uh, our maneuver here, our slingshot maneuver. Uh, so 500, we're going to stop and we're going to start coasting toward the planet. This time I'll do the full thing in time lapse. And uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, we've reached our top speed, which is going to be 500.61 as we enter our maneuver. Um, and let's, yeah, let's go for it. All right, there we go. Our P gravity is zero, which means the maneuver is complete, and we're sitting at 501.82 meters per second. And we started at 500.61 meters per second, so we gained a little bit more than one meter per second. Now, technically, we did end up going faster than we started, so we could say that the slingshot totally worked. However, 
In a real slingshot maneuver, you wouldn't be gaining 1 meter per second, you'd be gaining more like 100 or 200 meters per second. 1 meter per second is not even worth the trouble of trying the slingshot. So rather than to come to the conclusion that the slingshot was a success and got us from, what, 500... 0.61 to 501.82, I'm more inclined to believe that this is just space engineers being space engineers. For all intents and purposes, the 1 meter per second that we gained here is more or less negligible. So here comes the fun part of this video. We did everything we're supposed to do with a maneuver, we went in, we hit the gravity, we kind of went around the planet, and we left. So how come we didn't gain 100 meters per second or lose 100 meters per second? How come the, the maneuver didn't work like we think it would? Well, to understand that, let's have a quick little talk about how slingshot maneuvers really work and why we wouldn't really expect them to work in Space Engineers in the first place. Ah, slingshot maneuvers. It took me a long time to understand exactly how these things worked. I had to look up a lot of articles. I had to look up a certain Wikipedia page. Because when you think about it on the surface, a slingshot maneuver is not really very intuitive. What's essentially happening is a spacecraft is going into a planet's gravity, gaining some speed, then going out of the planet's gravity, so it's losing some speed because of the gravity. However, it comes out of the whole thing with more speed than it started? Well, hang on now, isn't there something called conservation of energy that's supposed to make it so that that's not allowed to happen? Well, yeah, technically, but I didn't give you the full picture. When it comes to a slingshot maneuver, when you look at the perspective of just the planet, so let's pretend that there's nothing else in the solar system, you've just got your planet, and it's a stationary object, the craft is going into the gravity, it's gaining speed, and then it's leaving the gravity and losing that speed. So if you're looking just from the perspective of this planet, the craft has the same speed as when it started. However, we have to remember that the planet is actually revolving around the sun. So the planet has its own speed, and thus it has its own energy. And that's where that energy comes from that the craft gets to make it go faster or slower. With a real-life slingshot maneuver, the craft essentially goes into the planet's gravity. It picks up the speed from the gravity of the planet, but it also picks up some of that speed or some of that energy from the planet that's moving around the sun. So when it leaves, it loses all the energy it gained from gravity, but it still retains some of that energy from the rotation of the planet itself. Now, if you're like I was when I started learning that, that's probably still a bit confusing. So let me give you a nice example that I found online. Picture you're standing on some train tracks and in front of you there's a train, but the train isn't moving and you have a tennis ball in your hand. Now you throw the tennis ball at the train, what would you expect to happen? Well, the tennis ball is going to hit the train and it's going to bounce right back to you at the same speed that you threw it initially. That's just how things happen. It's like a brick wall. Now picture instead that the train's actually coming towards you at a pretty high rate of speed. Let's say 50 meters per second. Well, from the conductor who's inside the train, from his perspective, the ball's actually coming at the train at 60 meters per second, because you threw it at 10, and the train's moving towards the ball at 50, so 50 plus 10 is going to be the 60 meters per second. So he's going to see it coming towards the train at 60 meters per second, and then he's going to see it go away from the train at 60 meters per second. But from the perspective of the person who actually threw the ball in the first place, the ball's going toward the train at only 10 meters per second, and it's leaving the train at 60 meters per second. So to that person who threw the ball before he gets squashed by the train because he's in the tracks, it looks like that ball gained a lot of speed when it hit the train. And it technically did. And that's exactly how slingshots work. So to reiterate one last time, the craft goes inside the planet's gravity, picks up some speed from the gravity of the planet itself, also picks up some speed from the rotation of the planet around the sun, so it picks up some of that energy. Then it starts to leave the planet's gravity, so it loses the speed it initially gained from gravity, However, it keeps the speed that it gained from the rotation of the planet around the sun. So it's thereby, through the whole maneuver, gained some speed. And so now that we all know how slingshot maneuvers work, why doesn't it work in Space Engineers? Well, Space Engineers' planets are not actually rotating around anything. They don't have any energy. They're just voxels with gravity. So what's happening in Space Engineers is your craft goes inside the gravity, it picks up the, the speed that it would get from the gravity, but it doesn't pick up any speed from the rotation of the planet around the sun because the planet isn't rotating around the sun. There's no energy there to be gained. It might gain some clang energy, which is what we probably saw with the one meter per second, but that's about it. Then towards the end of the maneuver, the craft goes out of the planet's gravity, so it loses that initial speed it got from the gravity, and in theory, it should be right back at the original speed that it started at. However, again, space engineers are space engineers sometimes, and so that doesn't exactly happen, it seems. But either way, I think we can finally answer the question we set out to answer at the start of this video. Can you do slingshot maneuvers in Space Engineers? Well, in order to gain speed or decrease speed, you cannot. It's not going to work. Maybe you'll gain 1 or 2 meter per second, but that's more clang than it has to do with anything slingshot related. But if you remember at the start of this video, we said that slingshot maneuvers can also serve not only to increase or decrease your speed, but to change the trajectory of the spacecraft. Now, is that one possible? Well, yeah, it certainly is. 
In the examples that we just did, we started at a position and we went towards a marker called AIM. That was more or less in a straight line, and then we got picked up by the planet's gravity, so we started getting pulled in toward the planet, but we were going fast enough to escape the planet's gravity. So once we got to a certain point, we started leaving the planet's gravity in a different trajectory than when we started. So if you really wanted to, and you were disciplined enough to sit down and do some calculations, you could theoretically find out where you would end up in a certain, uh, a certain slingshot maneuver given your initial speed and the height that you're going to enter the gravity at. But, you know, that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> and we're just in the business of proving or disproving something, so... But anyways, I think that's a good conclusion to this video. Another orbital video. That one's always fun. I was kind of worried about how I was going to do this one uh, when, when the person commented that I should try slingshotting because I didn't know how it worked. Like I said, to me it seemed like conservation of energy should make it not even possible, but after doing a little bit of reading it kind of becomes a little more intuitive, I guess. It's still super weird and I have no clue how rocket scientists sit down and figure out you know, oh, we're going to slingshot around this, which will put us in position to slingshot around that one, which will then put us in position to slingshot around that one, which will then send us off in the direction of Andromeda Galaxy. It seems like it would take me weeks or months or even years to figure out those uh, those numbers. But anyways, that's the end of this video. If you guys liked it, please hit that like button. Put any comments and suggestions for future Space Busters episodes in the comments below. Also, please, if I made any uh, mistakes in my calculations or I made any mistakes in my explanation, please post down that down in the comment below and I'll make sure to address that uh, in a reply. Maybe I'll pin the comment or something like that. Because in essence, I spent a couple of hours researching how slingshotting works, whereas a lot of you guys probably actually do this as your day job. So yeah, if I made any mistakes in that or you have a better example, for instance, to help people understand how slingshotting works, please post that down in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Busters.